Hey everybody, this is Ibadian X from The Candid Frame. I got an email last week and they asked me whether I critique vertical images. And when I thought about it, I realized that the great majority of the photographs that I critique on this channel tend to be horizontal. It's not that I don't like vertical images, but for, for whatever reason, the great majority of the images that are posted here are, are horizontal, and um, those are the ones I've tended to gravitate to for the most part. But I thought it would be a great point of discussion. So that's what we're going to do today. But before I do, I want to let you know that next Wednesday, I am going, going to be appearing on Scott Kilby's The Grid. That's going to be on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm going to be a, a guest on the show to talk about my work and specifically about the release of my uh, my new book, Making Photographs, Developing a Personal Visual Workflow. So I'm really excited um, to, to, to be, here on the, be on the show. It records and is shared live uh, at that time, but it's always recorded. So if you don't manage to catch it when it's live on the air, you'll be able to review it later. But if you do have the chance to watch it live, you, you may be able to send in some questions or some comments while I'm on the air, and I really would welcome you uh, attending that, that session. But let's get back to the topic. So here are the two things that I consider when I'm choosing to make a vertical image. And, well, before before that, there's a, there's a suggestion that's often made when the question is posed, well, when do I shoot vertical? And the best answer to that question is right after you've shot a horizontal. Because the choice to go from horizontal to vertical or vice versa really transforms what the image looks like and how, how all the different elements in the frame relate to each other. But that being said, when I'm choosing to go vertical, these are the two considerations that I make. One, if I'm going horizontal to vertical, sometimes it's because there are elements on the edges on the frame of edges of the frame on the right or on the left that I just find distracting. Uh, they're problematic, and simply orienting the camera in a vertical position eliminates those distractions on the the left and right. It's a really easy thing to do for me, especially since I don't use a zoom lens, so I don't have the option of just zooming in and, and getting a more tighter composition. So orienting the camera vertically is the easiest solution for me in, in that case. The second is the scene itself has a lot of strong graphic lines, sometimes vertical or or uh, diagonal lines, that I think can be sort of reinforced by orienting the camera in a vertical position. Because of the, you know, the, the format of the frame, um, vertical lines, and especially diagonal lines, seem to be strengthened more within the composition when you go vertical as opposed to horizontal. And those are pretty much the two decisions I'm or the two things I'm considering anytime I'm choosing to shoot a vertical. And I chose three images that sort of reinforce this idea of the elimination of distractions and building on the graphic nature of the scene. So let's take a look at these pictures. Okay, we're starting off with this photograph by Teresa Pilcher. This was made with a Sony A7 at 1 60th of a second, f2.8, ISO 1600. Now, here she has this photograph of this young girl running down this alleyway or narrow street in, in Japan. And you can see that this shot is very, very graphic. You have these repeating vertical lines everywhere. The more obvious one is this drain pipe here, and also some uh, you know, pipes for wiring. You can see it here, this repeating pattern in, in the facade for this building here, or this entryway uh, in the structures of the buildings, the signage in the distance. And it's it's everywhere, even as you go deeper and deeper into the scene, that this this repetition happens throughout this, this composition, which is also repeated in the body of the girl. She's very thin, and so her body is like a line, and her legs extended out as she's running, sort of parallel all these vertical lines that we see throughout the frame. Now, the choice to go vertical in this shot, because 
this is the long end of that of the frame that alone sort of reinforces or emphasizes or accentuates the presence of these vertical lines those lines in that in that repetition would still be seen in a horizontal part composition but the choice to go vertical i think really strengthens the impression of those lines in in the photograph and then the girl herself uh, is is just a wonderful counterpoint to all these sort of fixed elements in the scene. As I said before, her body and her legs, they create a similar uh, linear shape as as the things that exist around her. But you have a, a sense of dynamism, of energy, of movement, as a result of the fact that there's a slight blur of her foot, her legs are splayed, and she is literally floating above the ground because Teresa got it, the shot mid-stride. So she's launched from the ground, and her left foot is about to make contact on the ground, but she got it a beat before that happens. And so this verticalness that, that is everywhere in this shot, it just builds and builds and builds. The, the repetition of patterns and shape are a really important aspect of any composition that you're making. But in this one, it's especially, especially important. Now, there are also a lot of diagonal lines that are happening here. You have her arm here. You have uh, her suspenders that create sort of an X pattern here. But you also see that diagonal line, not only here with these, you know, these pipes and all these, with this wire here, but also just by her this this vanishing point, this this area of um, this implied diagonal line that sort of terminates here in the center area here that shows where she's moving to. So you have horizontal, you have diagonal, you have vertical lines that are in this shot. And that's one of the reasons that I, as a photographer, would have done what Teresa did and shot it vertically. As you make shots, you you realize that there are certain certain scenes that are really served by, by going vertical. Would this shot have worked just as well going on horizontal? Maybe it would have, but I think that the impact of these vertical, vertical lines would have been lessened had that been done. And this is a case where you really have to make the choice at the moment that it's happening, because you really don't have the time to do a horizontal and then do a vertical, because this girl is speeding through this, this space. And so you have to take a look at a scene and make an assessment even before the, the moment plays itself to make a choice of which orientation that you're going to go with. And that's, and that's just going to come with, with practice. Next, we have a shot by KF. This was created with a Fujifilm X-T1 at 1 800th of a second, 7.1 for an aperture, and ISO 200. Now, this shot doesn't have a lot of strong vertical lines as, as the previous shot did, but it does have a lot of diagonal lines that are repeated throughout the, the frame. You can see the more obvious ones in the lines created by, by the sidewalk. You also see it in the, the position of the legs. You can see this nice you know, uh, V or triangular pattern with her legs, uh, with her arm here. You have the arm of what is likely a street light with the one-way sign uh, on the left. You do have the repeating pattern of the windows here um, that are more um, vertical. You know, they're, re they're rectangles more so than anything else. But again, they're still very strong sort of graphic shapes. And you can see those, the, the variation of this, of these sort of rectangles everywhere, including these windows here that are relegated to shadow. And because of the way the shadow here breaks up the crosswalk, the repetition of those shapes are, are, are inherent here as well. Even though we don't have that abundance of vertical lines, you can see how the graphic nature of the shot really is served by orienting the camera vertically. The choice here to go vertical helps to accentuate those things, but it also does another thing. It helps create a more connected relationship between what's happening here and this building in the back. And I think it was a conscious choice by the photographer to, to go vertical, not just because of the graphic nature of the scene, but just because by eliminating elements here on to the right and the left that would have existed with a horizontal composition, they're able to just limit what exists in the frame to the point that this building here 
and this girl are connected in a way. All this area is sort of relegated to shadow, and our eyes are naturally drawn to the brightest elements in the frame. And this building here is definitely drawing our eye, and I love how the light also catches the one-way sign. But what it creates, it's sort of a, a, a tension between this area that's very bright and this area here that's very, very saturated. That red and that white really pull our eyes into the frame. Normally, when you have something as bright as this, it's such a distraction that it you know, detracts from the subject. And, and at some point, your eye just keeps going back here, and you lose sight of what's happening here with, 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 with what is obviously the main subject. But I find myself going back and forth between these two and not finding this to be a problematic distraction. And one of the reasons for that is that this subject possesses two qualities that I always talk about that you want to use to leverage control of your frame. And one of those things is color saturation. The red is just... It just pops and leads you to the frame. And the second one is gesture. And you could probably say a third thing is the, the line and shapes that are created by her body. So she possesses three of those graphic elements that pull your eye to her. So even though this is brighter, I feel like there's this nice tension that exists between those two. And the choice of going vertical really allows you to build on the synchronicity that exists between those two subjects. If the shot was vertical, there could have been any number of things on the left-hand side of the frame. There could have been a car that was making a left-hand turn. There could be another person here was wearing a, a white coat. You know, we don't know. But I would think that the photographer, by composing the shot in this way, was aware of the lighting and saw the relationship that they could create between this and that subject. And I think the vertical shot here really helps tremendously in making the most of those strong visual elements. Next, we have a shot by Azam al Suabi. Forgive me for the mispronunciation. Uh, this was shot with a Fuji X-T1, 1 500th of a second, 5.6, ISO 200. So this shot, again, just like the other two shots, very graphic. Even before you take a look at the woman who is here in this scene, you see all the things that I was talking about in the previous image. You have the strong vertical lines by these electrical wires. Then you have these the lines here coming into the frame. You have what looks like tracks. Or no, actually these are, are mirror images of some of the elements there, or they could be tracks in the ground. It's really hard to say, but I think it's a reflection of these lines here on the frame. And you also have these, these sort of curvy lines created in the, in the dirt or the sediment or the sand or whatever this is here. And the transition from the water to sort of the dry, the dry area here creates this, um, you know, sort of jagged, um, jagged line that differentiates those two areas of the ground there. And you have, of course, you have the very strong horizon line here. In the very distance, you can see that there are other structures or, or probably towers along these lines here. So you can already see that it's building on the very things that I think favor the use of a vertical composition. And then you add the presence of the woman who, who adds more than just scale to the scene. I mean, she's really an important element here. But tonally, she is a remarkable element in, in the photograph because most of the scene falls into sort of a grayish tone. But because of her dark clothing, she becomes the highest point of contrast in the composition. And we go directly to her as a result of that contrast. And her shape is more sort of curvy, softer. These things are very hard, distinct, sharp lines. Her shape, because of the clothing she's wearing, is very, very soft. And the only sort of definitive lines exist uh, in her hand. And you can just see the separation between her, her fingers and her, in her hand. And the shot just comes together really beautifully as a result. Again, the choice to go vertical accentuates all the things that are happening with these vertical 
and in diagonal lines. And the, of course, the, the strong horizontal line here. And I commend Azam here for making sure that he composed the shot so that her head was not cut off by the horizon line. It falls just below, which is a great, great observation in terms of him putting together this this frame. Because of the clothing that this woman's wearing, you don't get the advantage of the splayed legs or arms that we saw in the previous two shots, but her overall shape is a really nice counterpoint to all the strong, sharp lines that, that exist elsewhere. And you can really see how how these compositions are really strengthened by not simply making a horizontal shot. Yeah, you could crop it later after the fact, but you lose resolution, you lose detail when you have to crop uh, a vertical out of a horizontal frame. So it's really best, you know, to shoot both if you can. But more importantly, I think it's it's important to observe a scene and to think, how can I make this shot better? Will doing a vertical serve serve what I'm seeing better or a horizontal? And if you're not really comfortable or you haven't gotten acclimated to seeing with that much care, what I said before really applies. Right after you shoot a horizontal, shoot a vertical and compare the images and then see over time when your shots benefit from going vertical as opposed to horizontal. Um, sometimes neither shot will work, but it will develop your eye for when it does. And when you see a moment that really is served by making that choice, It'll be so obvious to you, and you'll be glad that you did it. All right, thanks for watching uh, my book. As I mentioned before, Making Photographs is now available for purchase. And in it, I discuss all the principles that I discuss in this video and in my workshops and, and my presentations. And you can get it for 40% off the list price when you go to the Rocky Nook website and use the promo code PORELLO40. Uh, you see the link right, uh, right here somewhere, and uh, use it and use the discount. And if you like the book, please write a review and, and let me know what you think. And uh, The Candid Frame is my podcast, which I've been doing for the last uh, 13 years. And my, my, our most recent conversation was with the National Geographic photographer, Mark Thiessen. And he's done some amazing work in studio, but he's largely known for the work he's done uh, documenting the work and the lives of uh, wildland firefighters, of which he's one. It is a fascinating story, and you'll learn so much about what's involved in fighting firefight uh, firefighting uh, in wildfires, which are a completely amazing phenomena, and what it takes to be able to photograph them. So check it out by going to thecandidframe.com, or I do uh, share the, uh, the videos here on our YouTube channel. And if you want to contribute to the Candid Frame Flickr poll, all you need to do is go onto your computer, go to Flickr, and search for the Candid Frame, and just ask to be added. If you try to do it on your tablet or your phone, you're going to get a message that this is a private group and it's invitation only. That's something that only comes up if you're trying to add yourself using your tablet or phone. If you go on your computer, you won't have the issue. So um, please join. I usually get to that once a week, and then you can contribute to the thousands of people who uh, uh, upload images every week. So thanks again for joining me, and uh, we'll see you next time. And if you like what you're seeing here, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. No, see you next time.